Hey, it's Jordan with the Young Turks, TYT Politics. This is Real American News. Uh, we have Christian Bo. Uh, he is the chair of Central New Jersey for uh, Democrat Socialists of America, and he's also running as a candidate uh, for the uh, se- com- National Committee? Yeah, the National Political Committee. Yeah, and uh, he is not driving. He's in the passenger seat. <laughs> uh, just uh, assuage all your fears. But he's on his way uh, with fellow socialists to the big conference they're having in Chicago this weekend. Uh, it's supposed to be the biggest conference they've ever had, uh, Democrat Socialists of America conference. And I wanted to talk to you, Christian. You were very instrumental uh, in yesterday's news. Uh, Democrat Socialists of America hit 25,000 uh, paid members. And that's up uh, from 8,000 a year ago to 25,000 this year. So tell me, uh, other than obviously Bernie running and the exp- exploding progressive movement, what, what have you guys been doing that's spiked membership? Yeah, so I think um, this has been a years long process, even before Bernie happened. Um, the left in the US has kind of been wrestling with a lot of social movements from. Uh, you know, older people, maybe the Iraq war protest to Occupy Wall Street to Black Lives Matter. Um, and people have been engaging with radical social movements, but not really finding their place within the, a broader political movement. Um, so a lot of one issue movements. Uh, and we really think the ESA is a culmination of all of those. So anti-war, uh, fighting for racial justice, fighting for economic equality, um, combining all of these struggles into one broader struggle Um, which is what DSA fights for. Uh, We fight on multiple fronts. Um, We do electoral work, we do community organizing, and we do workplace organizing. Um, So we just combine all of these things. So we think we owe a lot to both the Sanders campaign, but we also owe a lot to social movements um, that have existed for years prior that really forged the ground for the left. um, And we've really capitalized on that momentum. You know, something I I found um, on the campaign trail is that when you use the word socialist, a lot of like establishment people don't like it. A lot of Republicans don't like it. But when you actually go like point by point by point on policy, they are socialist. So (laughs) have you have you noticed in your uh, obviously giant growth over the last year that it's not just like capital P progressives and leftists, but you've been able to attract more traditional Democrats or even conservatives? Yeah, I would say, you know, we've recruited, we've recruited a broad range of people. It's not only, you know, young radicals that have really been uh, with embedded in what would be the socialist left. But, you know, I know people that have joined within my chapter, it's parents um, that are firefighters, teachers that have kids and a wide range of people um, that have been inspired and really activated to do more than just vote every once or two or four years, but to really actively engage in not only democracy um, electorally, but also workplace democracy and really taking back control of their lives um, and, you know, dedicating more of their time to uh, playing a role politically and within their community. Um, So it's been a very wide range of people and it's been super exciting to see so many people from different wide ranges and especially a multi-generational movement. Um, I learned a lot from people that are my parents' age joining our organization to work with DSA. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you have to say, you know, when you're when you're looking at uh, the national media right now, all these pieces about, oh, Kamala Harris, you know, pushing her for 2020. I just read an article about former Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick. The Democrats are starting to throw his name in. Nobody, everybody but Bernie Sanders. Uh, it seems like the corporate establishment in the media in D.C., obviously they're not paying attention to the exploding movement among uh, DSA. Uh, is, is DSA's eyes on 2018 or 2020 or more long-term structural change? I think our eyes are on all of them. So obviously we have a vision for the future that we think the Democratic Party just does not have. You know, they like to think they have a vision for 2020, but that's not an actual vision for anything. It's a vision to get another Democrat elected, but it's not a transformational vision. Um, It's mediocrity. Um, And we think that we have a real vision across multiple uh, campaigns that we're running, Um, anything from, you know, Fight for 15 to Medicare for All, 
uh, to, <laughs> you know, a real transformational vision of what democratic socialism would look like. Um, yeah, so I think we're focused in the here and now, but also we have a real vision, which is focusing on the now to create uh, the broader vision that we want. Um, we think, you know, we have candidates running right now. Just last night, um, our candidate advanced in the Seattle City Council race, um, and we have 13 members of DSA that are elected officials. Uh, it's going to take a long time to build uh, like an actual, just not a progressive left, but a socialist left um, that's powerful. And, you know, we think that we really need to uh, win local power to gain national power. Um, and that you can't really disentangle the workplace from just electoral power. You need to build both of them at the same time. So we need to retake the labor movement uh, to create a political movement. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we do. We have city council races now. We just endorsed another six people yesterday um, running across the nation in city council races uh, from New York to Minneapolis to Lakewood, um, Ohio. And we really think, you know, change starts within our community and that we have a lot of control over these candidates and they're responsive to us, whereas in presidential races, it's really difficult to stake your claim in, in what they are, especially when Democrats capitulate so much to other interests. And uh, what do you think uh, the argument, because I get it all the time on Twitter and, you know, calling me a Russian Kremlin and all this stuff, that all these people say, you know, what you guys are doing, uh, cover, you know, basically moving away from the Democratic Party, uh, you're helping Trump, we all need to unite against Trump, the, the evil boogeyman. Um, to me, I think you could do two things at once. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, among DSA that these Democrats, these neoliberals, even more progressive people say now's not the time to focus on Democratic Party reform or moving away from the Democratic Party? Yeah, I mean, just I've been hearing that point my whole entire life. It just goes from one election to the next that this is the line. They'll use it again in 2020, but I remember it even in 20, you know, 2008 um, and before that, even before I could vote. I've been hearing this line forever. Um, fundamentally, the system is a problem. It's not, you know, Trump is uh, a symptom, but he's not the disease. The disease is capitalism in the system, we think. Um, and we need to confront the system. You know, there are a lot of terrible Republicans that run for president, and there will be in 2022, um, that will put forward very egregious things that are attack on the working class. Um, and, you know, we, we fight Trump just as hard as, as they do. We um, activated 30 chapters to do sit-ins, and a lot of members of DSA got arrested um, with ADAPT during uh, the Trump care kind of stuff that went down. And we were lucky to defeat it, but we think, you know, we can fight on both fronts. We need to protect a welfare state that exists, but really expand the welfare state um, and present a forward vision. So I think you can do both of them at the same time, you know. Their mediocrity really leads to the rise of a lot of these people. Um, I just know within my area, uh, I think close to 5% of people voted in, in some local areas where I live. And it's just, you can't expect to beat anybody when you're not motivating anybody to get to the polls. I want to ask you, you mentioned capitalism, because I like to torture myself. So I had CNN on this morning. And they're, they're doing na naked jump, jumping jacks. Oh, the Dow just crossed 22,000 for the first time. And every, everything is grand in America. And the stock market's through the roof. And in my experience, you know, I went out last year and this year, and I cover more what I would call, like, disappearing middle class issues. And mm -hmm. there's such a disconnect between what these coastal elites in the media and uh, Capitol Hill think is going on in America versus, like, what's actually happening. Uh, in your efforts in New Jersey and people you've met and attracted to join DSA, can you kind of talk about the victims of capitalism and what you've seen? Yeah, so I, I mean, I mean, my generation has never really recovered from the economic crash. We've kind of been in the cycle where nobody's confronting the fact that millennials have kind of been in this fear position that, you know, they're trying to move on, but none of my friends have really moved on. Nobody within my life, you know, has really moved on. We're kind of in this precarious position that people are taking whatever they can get with work, but it's not stability at all. People are just taking work as it comes. But, you know, when there used to be union jobs, you could find something stable um, and have something that would last your family and you wouldn't be hyper-reliant on, uh, you know, having to 
constantly find work year in and year out, but have something really stable in your life. Um, the healthcare system is absolutely criminal. Um, and a lot of my friends have played victim to it. Uh, you know, uh, student debt is another thing. My friends will never own houses. We can't really afford cars. You know, we don't own anything. We are a precarious generation that is extremely just living on the edge of um, financial ruin. I think a lot of people within my generation are one accident away from, you know, being completely screwed for the rest of their life, um, whether it be the healthcare system or not being able to find a job after college. Um, there's just a multitude of things. It's not one or the other. Um, it's fundamentally the system. And, you know, a lot of bubbles that exist within the student loan program, um, we think that, you know, uh, nobody really confronted uh, what happened and nobody got in trouble in 2008. My family suffered. We lost our house. Nobody else suffered especially at the, uh, at the elite level. Yeah, and I would add, you know, I totally agree with everything you said. A lot of people don't realize that older people got fucked too. I mean, I know, yes. I'm, I'm sure you met D, uh, plenty of people that got uh, attracted to DSA that uh, their 401k went to, he went to hell. They lost their home, all their savings, whatever, that had been working for 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, last yep. question. So you have this uh, giant conference this weekend, and before you know it, like we're already in 2018, I know that it's not only about electoral uh, focus, but like, what 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 is next? You, I mean, you basically grew faster than any other political party uh, in the last year. What is DSA eyeing now? Yeah, so the next goal is um, uh, after the Sanders campaign, we really confronted where socialism could win. We looked at maps and kind of tried to trace where he did poorly and build off of it. Um, so we're in a better place for the future. And then also a lot of places that he did extremely well, um, places like Hawaii, we now have chapters, Alaska, where he did well in the caucus. Um, we now have 10 chapters in Florida, where we didn't have any chapters this time last year. We have 13 chapters in Texas, four chapters in Alabama. Um, so we went from a 20 state, 46 chapter organization to now 164 chapter, 46 state organization. And we have a more coherent and vibrant 50 state organization than the Democratic Party does, despite only being a 25,000 member organization. Um, so I think really what our future is, is wrestling with what that means. Um, a lot of people are fighting on different terrains for where they're organizing. Um, a lot of this is the first time an organization like ours has really tried to organize their communities before. Um, so I think it's gonna take some time. We're gonna win local races, you know, we're going to win campaigns, social movements, these kinds of things. I think, you know, we will play a big role um, as we grow towards, you know, hopefully we quadruple again. And that's my goal is to become a 100,000 member organization um, by 2020 um, and to be the, the, the largest socialist organization since the Socialist Party um, when Eugene Debs ran for president. Uh, so, yeah, our fundamental vision is organizing everywhere. Um, not ceding any ground, letting everybody have a place within our movement, um, and really working together to confront um, both of the parties and then also capitalism. And um, just so people, because a lot of people don't know, like if they wanted to join, do they? Is there a website? How do they do that? Yeah, you can join at dsausa.org/join. Um, it would be really great if people did. We just um, surpassed twenty-five thousand members uh the largest we ever were in our history was a ten thousand member organization um and the sky is a limit for us you know we're a decentralized multi-tendency organization and we really meet people where they're at and give them the resources to be a part of a broader movement um especially a democratic movement um this we give people a place to play a vibrant role and yeah the sky is a limit for us and what we can accomplish um and we have a world to win and that's dsausa.org? Slash join, yes. Cool, cool. Thanks so much, man. Safe driving, and uh, we will talk soon. Yeah, thank you so much. It was great to be on. Okay, have a good one. Yeah, you too.